Hi guys and welcome to this, my lesson on trigonometric ratios. And sorry I'm not in school today, but I'm sure you will learn as much from this as if I was in the classroom. Please ensure that your behaviour is exemplary for whoever is in the room with you. As I said in the lesson, I will not be overly impressed if I get back and find out that some of you were less than cordial and polite. Alright, so first things first. At the end of this video, this is what I'm needing you to do. All right, All of these questions here... This exercise is not particularly difficult, and in fact, it's something you have done over and over again in year nine. So, some of you may not even need to read or watch this video. Key questions from the lesson. Which is the longest side of a right angle triangle? What is a trigonometric ratio? And what is Sokotoa? And how do I use it? First things, the longest side. When I did this many, many years ago, I had an inspirational teacher. Such a shame that you don't. No, just joking, I'm trying my best. And it always was described as the hippopotamus, right? And I always had this mental image of some sort of hippo lying on a slope. But it's helped me remember forever that when I have a right angle triangle, this side here is the hypotenuse. It is the longest side, and as such, no other side can be longer than it. I always like to think that this right angle here is an arrow pointing to the longest side. Now, there are two other sides, and I'm sure you know this. You can already see here that one says opposite and one says adjacent. So the opposite and adjacent. At this moment in time, opposite and adjacent to what? Well, this is where we talk about this idea of the reference angle. If I have someone sitting opposite me, then it's with reference to where I currently am. At this moment in time, this triangle has no reference angle. If I put one in, and I tend to call it theta, which is a Greek letter standing for theta, then basically I am looking at the opposite side. If we look here, this side is opposite. So there is my opposite. And there is my adjacent. Right? And again, the word adjacent basically means adjacent to, all right? or side by side. Again, I always think here of the angle actually touching the adjacent side. So it's opposite and adjacent. Knowing that, then actually we can do a huge amount of stuff that allows me to solve any questions with right angle triangles. Always be careful in a question that you make sure that it's uh, asking you to do the right thing. So right angle triangles, when I think about them, can either have areas, right? and we know that to find the area of a right angle triangle, hopefully you do the base times the height and you halve it, and that will give you the area. What other subject area do we look at with regards to right angle triangles? Well, hopefully Pythagoras theorem, which says c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So when the question is there, if it gives you an angle, the chances are it's going to be looking for you to find some sort of side length. And if it gives you two sides, the chances are it's going to be looking for an angle or in fact another side length. So this reference angle is really, really important. Now when we come on to trigonometric ratios, there are basically three formula which help us relate the size of an angle to the ratio of their sides. And a lot of people go, well, what is a ratio? And yes, every person I've spoken to so far at Peninsula goes, ah, oh, it's that thing with the dot in, isn't it? Like, governor. Not that anyone talks like that here, I think that's just me. But the point of it is, yes, that is a ratio. That's like saying, ah, oh, for every one cent I get, a friend gets five cents. For every one pot of red paint, there are five pots of white paint to make pink, blah, blah, blah. But actually, what you really need to know is a ratio is nothing more than a fraction. So if I write one-fifth, that's actually a ratio. So when we're dealing with trigonometric ratios, what we're trying to say is we don't necessarily have to write our answer as a decimal. We don't have to write it by working out a final decimal value. Sometimes the questions are happy in just looking at uh, a fractional answer. And so we come on to silly old Harry caught a herring trawling off America. And again, lost in translation, sadly, sometimes in Australia, because people don't know what a herring is and don't know what trawling means. So firstly, I have no idea. I was trying to find someone with the first name Harry and other than Harry Connick Jr., Prince Harry, and of course, Harry Styles. Let's imagine that he is silly and old. Well, he's older than you guys. This is a trawler. Basically allows you to go fishing. This is a herring. And this is the American flag. 
And you're probably sitting there going, what on earth does this have to do with the price of fish? Which is actually quite funny because there's a fish. Anyway, what? Well, when I was at school, I had this wonderful maths teacher who basically learnt us or taught us all to say, silly old Harry, caught a herring, trawling off America. And when I write it long ways down, what do I see? Yes, well, when I take the first letter of silly old Harry, caught a herring, trawling off America, I end up with Sokatoa. Sokatoa? What's your Sokatoa business? And that's where we come to trigonometric identities. So what is a trigonometric identity? Long story short, when we have a right angle triangle, if this is an angle, this is my opposite, this is my adjacent, and this is my hypotenuse, which happens to begin with O, A, and H. We know that there is a way of relating my angle, which is here, with two of the sides. And those sides vary depending on this S, C, and T. So, so, ka, toa is basically a way for us to remember three formulas. Now, when I was at school, I was taught to write this little O actually floating. And some people actually do S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A. -H -A. Because the reason being is the O on top of the H and the O above the H actually helps me remember these three formulas. So let's see, S-O-H. Well, first thing your calculator has buttons or functions on there that begin with S, C, and T. One is sine, one is cosine, and one is tangent. Please, ladies and gentlemen, can we always remember that when we write it as S-I-N, it is not sin, it is sine. From this day forward, it will always be sine. This is cosine, and this is tangent. And the abbreviation is sine, cos, and tan. And it says, looking at our thing here, that to find the sine of an angle, let's make it slightly bigger, if you take the length of the opposite and divide it by the length of the hypotenuse, that is your trigonometric ratio. If we have the cosine of an angle, we want to find the adjacent and divide it by the hypotenuse. And to find the tan of an angle, we take the opposite and divide it by adjacent. So again, how does that actually work in real life? Imagine we have this triangle. Here is my value of theta, and I know that that is 3, and that is 4 units long. And I want to find the size of that angle. Well, how would we do that? Well, the first thing we do is we say, right, let's look at what sides they've given me in reference to the angle. This one here is opposite. This one here is adjacent. So I'm looking for the identity that links opposite and adjacent. And it just so happens that there is only one identity. And so it says to find the angle. We know that there is a formula, a trigonometric identity says tan theta is equal to opposite length divided by the adjacent length. Now, if they just wanted a trigonometric ratio, that is where I would leave my answer. If they want more from me, well, that's where we use our calculator. And there's no way for most of these values you can work them out in the head. Some of them you can. And what I would do is I would say that theta is equal to tan to the minus 1 of 3 quarters. And that is exactly what I would put into my calculator. Now, word to the wise. A lot of people make silly mistakes in an exam because they put their calculator into completely the wrong mode. You need to make sure that when you look at your calculator screen, there's that little bar down here. And somewhere, you need to make sure that it reads DEG. If it reads RAD, you're going to get completely the wrong answers because your calculator is in completely the wrong mode. And your calculator has actually three modes. Degrees, DEG, radians, RAD, and gradient, or gradients, G-R-A-D-I-A-N-S. Now, I have never in my life used gradients, so I'm assuming that's university stuff. Radians are used for methods three and four and methods one and two. And so you guys need to make sure that it's always in the degrees mode. Now, I don't have the calculator here with me at the moment, but that would come out in terms of some value and degrees. Here's another example. And again, I know you guys probably already know this, but here is theta. Let's say that's 4, and let's say that's 5. Again, what sides have they given me? They've given me the opposite, and in this case, they've given me the hypotenuse. So I'm looking for an identity with opposite and hypotenuse, and I happen to know that silly old Harry, 
has all of those in. So that leads to that the sine of the angle is equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So doing this is a trigonometric ratio. The opposite length is 4. The hypotenuse is 5. And if I just wanted to write the ratio, it would be 4 over 5. Otherwise, I would use my calculator and I would do the inverse sine of 4 fifths. That again will come out in some sort of degrees and be careful if they say round it to one decimal place or two decimal places. In an exam, if you don't round it to the right number of decimal places, then actually you get zero marks. So here's a couple of examples just for you to consider before you go loose on the questions. So first things first, it says using a calculator, find the cosine of 37. And it seems weird that the textbook starts with this. But remember, just because I've taught you something, the questions can actually start a lot, lot easier. And in this situation, it's actually asking you to use your calculator and type in cos 37. You don't need the degrees and press equals or exe or whatever else. And your calculator will come out with some form of decimal number. And it will happen to be between 0 and 1. Now, why is it between 0 and 1? I'll explain that in a slightly different lesson. But this question here and the questions from the textbook are just asking you to put some numbers into your calculator and press equals. I'm pretty sure, if I remember rightly, it says to round your answers to two decimal places. So make sure you do that. Next one. Solve the following for x and write the answer correct to two decimal places. There we go, two decimal places. In this situation, I am trying to get x on its own. It's currently got a divide by 3. So how do I undo a divide by 3? Yep, I'm going to multiply 3 on both sides. So I get 3 cos 23 degrees is equal to x. And this is something I just put into my calculator. And it will come out with some value that you have to round to two decimal places. Now a lot of people say to me, but Mr. Smith, what happens if I get an x on the bottom? My advice to you is this, and it hits a trick. If I have a over b equals c over d, if I have a fraction equals a fraction, now the great thing about that is I can actually swap corners. This only works when you have a fraction equals a fraction. If I had something here, say plus 3 or plus 7 or whatever else, if this was plus 6, it doesn't work. But in this situation, you're going to say to me, well, hold on a moment, I don't have two fractions. Actually, yes, you do. That's actually the sine of 30 over 1. So using the same idea, if I have the sine of 30 degrees over 1 is equal to 5 over the sine of x, there is nothing here to make me plus or minus, so that's good. I can now swap that corner and that corner. So x becomes equal to 5 over the sine of 30, which, wonderfully, you can put into your calculator, and that will give you a value. Again, rounding to two decimal places. This thing here is probably more likely to be in an exam as a result of lots of people can't do algebra where fractions are involved. But just learn that little trick and you should be okay. Here we go. Here's a question, and I think this has been copied straight from the textbook. So find the value of the pro numerals in the right angle triangle below. It's basically, just find the unknown letter. So here is my letter. I don't have a calculator. You guys can work all this stuff out when you have it. But let's see. Here's my reference angle, 65 degrees. This is the adjacent, so I've been given the adjacent, and I've been given the hypotenuse. My advice to you is always label your triangle. Draw the triangle into your book. Always write the identity that's going to link. So in this situation, I know it's C-A-H. You have to, in an exam, write the identity. You always get one mark for this. If you don't write it, you don't get the mark. So having written the identity, I now know the cos... Well, in this case, I know what the angle is. They've given me it's 65 degrees. <coughs> Sorry. Is equal to the adjacent, which is x, divided by the hypotenuse is 12. The x is on the top, the 12 is on the bottom, so I can multiply by 12 on both sides. And I get 12 cos 65 equals x. Now, a word to the wise. When you multiply by 12, when you multiply any sines or cosines by 12, I would always put the multiplier at the front. There is nothing wrong with writing x equals cos 65 times 12, but sometimes I'm worried that the calculator will actually multiply the 65 by the 12 rather than the cos 65. Right? Always better to be safe. 
Now you're going to say, well, how can I write the multiplication at the beginning? Well, if you remember, 2 times 3 is exactly the same as 3 times 2, and as such, we can do that. Here, same idea of a question. I've got an x, I've got a number, I've got a given angle. So this is my adjacent, this is my opposite, and so opposite and adjacent is TOA. So tan of theta is opposite, divided by adjacent. Tan, did they give me the angle? Yes, they did. It's 45 degrees. Opposite is 5.55 divided by x. Ah, oh, I've got a fraction equals a fraction, which means I can swap these two corners. That gives me 5.55 over the tan of 45. And I can put that into my calculator and solve. Last question. Be very careful. Whenever you've got worded questions, most of this is just completely fill. What you need to do is find out whether you can see a right angle triangle. And in this situation, I can see a right angle triangle. I know that that degree is 55.2. And in the question, they will give you certain pieces of information. So they're telling you the length of the shadow is 15.5 meters. So I can put that into my question. They want me to find the height of the tree. If I don't know what it is, put it in as x. Do I have all the information I need? Yes. Here is the opposite. Here is the adjacent. It's tan, and off you go. And as I say here, always look for these questions for right angle triangles. This is probably a relatively simple question. They get harder, and you'll get triangles within triangles within triangles. But look for the right angle triangle. I always draw a separate diagram. And once you know that, your job done. Okay, guys, that's the end of this. My advice to you, please, is to go and do those questions if you haven't already done so. Thanks very much. I look forward to seeing you next lesson.